Recent data reveals about one third of all B2B payments in the United States and Canada are made by paper check. Anecdotal evidence suggests strongly that this number continues to drop. But why isn't it approaching zero as it is in many other countries? Or should it? Are there times when a paper check might be the preferable payment mechanism? Let's find out. Although we're going to discuss cost first, please keep in mind that this is only one consideration. While cheaper doesn't necessarily mean better, it is definitely a consideration. And don't forget, extra manual processes translate into higher costs, even though you don't see them directly. So let's get started with ACH and ACH costs. For those well-versed in accounting, accounts payable, and finance, it's clear that cost efficiency is important. One significant advantage of ACH, automated clearinghouse payments, lies in the cost effectiveness compared to other payment tools used for B2B payments. As a rough guideline, traditional ACH payments typically cost between 10 and 20 cents per transaction, while same-day payments hover around the dollar mark. Keep in mind, these figures can vary depending on your banking relationship and other factors. One other benefit of ACH that is often overlooked involves revolves around bad payments. In this case, I mean a payment that bounces in the case of an ACH or in the case of a paper check, a check that doesn't get cash. With an ACH you find out in a day or two, making it easier to track down the recipient and get the information corrected. With a paper check, it is usually months before you start trying to figure out why the check wasn't cashed and where the recipient is. For if you don't find them, you should be doing the onerous reporting and remitting of that property to the state. It also means carrying the item on your bank recs for several months. So I wanted to share with you a little story. Some of you actually may have seen this. We recently did a global summit with some folks in the UK. We had one session where we talked about the different accounts payable functions and how we do them in the US and how they do them in the UK. And a lot of the stuff was the same. I mean, we've got all the same problems around the world. And then we started going over some issues and I got to unclaimed property, which if you're an American and you know a little bit about unclaimed property, you know, we got this concept from the Brits. So I brought up unclaimed property and they looked at me like, what are you talking about? And I said, you know, it's cheat. And they're like, we don't do that over here. And I thought about it for a minute and then a light went off. I'm like, oh yeah, of course they don't do it over there. They don't issue paper checks. So another problem that you can kind of get rid of, if you will, if you're not issuing paper checks. And you know, if you've listened to me before, you know, I'm a big proponent of electronic payments. Now, not only are the costs, the headaches of unclaimed property, but there are a whole lot of other headaches related to paper checks, which will also increase your costs. Sometimes they get lost in mail and then the vendor calls up because they think you didn't pay them and you have to deal with that and you have to put a stop payment on the lost check and issue a new one. Okay. Takes a lot of time and it's, you know, non-valuated work, except it has to be done. Some of you will have vendors who continually call up with questions that have to be responded to. Some of them are legitimate it. Some of them aren't, but you still have to respond to them. In the U.S. anyway, the mail has been slower than it was in the past. And this means that the check that, you know, you mail on the 25th because it's due on the 30th may not get there until the first or second of the next month. So that adds additional issues to it. And another reason why maybe vendors who were reluctant to take electronic payments in the past may be a little bit more amenable to it these days. Bank recs are much harder to do when everything isn't clearing the next day. And you know how much time you spend on bank recs and what a pain they are. Also, check fraud continues to be a problem and we have to guard against that. And then when we have checks, we have people who continually come down. They have their last minute emergencies. Yeah, they would have a last minute emergency if you were paying electronically, but it's a lot easier to make an electronic payment at the last minute than it is to issue that paper check. You got to get the checkbook out. Somebody's got to print it. You got to get the check signed, the whole rigmarole. And lastly, those people who want their checks returned to them, I don't know, some of them have good reasons, most of them don't. You know, they want to see it, they want to make sure the check gets in the mail, a whole bunch of other things of questionable value, let me put it to you that way. Well, if you're making an electronic payment and you don't have that check or you paid with a credit card, there's no check to return. So that conversation and that issue goes away. Cool. Before we talk about the appropriate uses of ACH and paper check, let's take a look at some of the costs associated with paper checks. Paper checks 
check cost. You right, might be wondering why ACH payments are considered much cheaper than paper checks, especially when you think paper checks cost about a dollar for postage and printing. The true cost of issuing paper checks goes far beyond the basic expenses. When you factor in the costs of printing, postage, and, and envelopes, etc., you're only scratching the surface. The real expense comes from the associated human costs such as bank reconciliation, check production, and the follow-up on the uncashed checks, which we've already talked about a little bit. These additional factors can drive up the true total cost of issuing paper checks to more than $20. If you're getting value from this talk, please hit the thumbs up or likes button. It lets the provider know this talk has value and should be shared with others like you. So ACH or payments, which should you use? In the United States, according to NACHA, 93% of all employees receive their paycheck via direct deposit, and most of them love it. That means that almost all professionals are familiar with ACH, for they're receiving payments in this manner already. So when trying to convince one of your suppliers to accept ACH, and yes, that still is a battle in some cases, simply refer to their own receiving of direct deposit, and they should see the light. For years, best practice organizations have been advocating for the transition from paper checks to ACH. This shift isn't just about keeping up with the times. It's also about embracing a payment method that is cheaper, faster, and more reliable for both the payor and the payee. No more excuses about checks lost in the mail, etc. ACH payments eliminate that risk entirely. From the payer's perspective, ACH payments offer an additional layer of security, if you will. In the event of an error, there's an option to recall the payment under certain, under certain conditions. This flexibility can be a real game changer for financial operations, reducing the headaches associated with rectifying payment mistakes. And by the way, whenever you make an online payment yourself using a bank account number instead of a credit card, you're utilizing the ACH, num uh, ACH network. It's a streamlined, efficient process that has become the backbone of modern payment systems. ACH ACH payments are ideal for most organizational transactions and in the B2B space and are significantly less expensive than paper checks. The only exception is when the payee has not provided their bank account information and refuses to do so. If you've purchased goods or services from them, you are legally obligated to pay them and you need to do so. And if you don't have their bank account number and they don't take credit cards, you're left with paper checks. So if they haven't provided your bank information, you really have no other choice. Interestingly, the United States leads the world in the issuance of paper checks, but this isn't a record to be proud of. It's kind of like saying you've got the highest golf score, you solved the daily wordle puzzle in six attempts, or you had a take the road test for your driver's license more than any of your friends. Not exactly brag worthy accomplishments. This is why best practice organizations are pushing hard to convert payments from paper checks to AP ACH, providing efficiency and cost savings in the process. So let's say you've de determined that paying by paper check is not the right uh, choice in, the, in certain circumstances. Should you pay with an ACH credit or an ACH debit? That depends on a few other criteria. We recently did a talk on that topic, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description.